I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue on here. Um, but like I said before, don't replace these with jumpers um, like a internet forum said that I saw. Um, that's a bad idea. Just disconnect one end or just disconnect it entirely. Um, but don't replace it with a jumper. Um, that That's terrible. Um, I don't know who said that, but whoever did um, should never post advice on the internet again. But um, after... Uh, it goes through this first gain stage. It goes into a uh, coupling cap, and you could uh, change the value of that. Um, it's the same thing as on this one, where the Russian models will be uh, 100 nanofarads, or 0.1, and then uh, the American models will be 1 nanofarad, and uh, you can kind of change that to taste. Um, and it'll add... Uh, some more low end uh, going through. After that, it goes to the sustain knob. After this first gain stage, uh, what you can what the sustain knob does is it'll either let everything through, um, or like in uh, or it will uh, dump a lot of that into the ground and depending on this resistor that's how much is dumped in the ground and how much is is being blocked and um, it's uh, not something that you really want to play with. Sane knob is pretty much good uh, on its own. Um, this resistor uh, it goes in correlation with the stain knob and the reason why that's there is just so that if um, you turn the stain knob all the way down if this wasn't there and this uh, was going straight to ground it would uh, just shut off the sound because you're um, pretty much just blocking everything. So this is there just that, that way um, when somebody per turns the stain knob all the, all the way down, they're not wondering, well, why doesn't my big muff work? You know, that kind of thing. Um, usually in volume uh, or in gain knobs, this is there uh, in gain knobs of, that, of this kind of format. Just so that way when you turn all the way down, there's still something there. Um, after that, it goes through another coupling cap, and you can change this value uh, just like you could in these ones. And uh, again, uh, in the Russian ones, it's 100 nanofarads, and the uh, American ones, it's one microfarad. And it'll uh, put some more low end going through. Um, it'll also add some more sustain if you were to increase this. Um, however, uh, one reason why this makes a big difference uh, in the from the Russian ver uh, version to the American version is uh, when you have this at a lower value it'll um, add some more uh, I hate using bu buzzwords but some more crunch to the distortion um, and if you were to add this you'd be sacrificing that kind of crunchiness of the Russian muff and one of the reasons why I like the Russian muff so much is um, the values of these capacitors so I'm not really gonna mess with that um, but you can if you want to you can bump it up to uh, one microfarad you can even go higher than that if you have an American one you can go higher than that if you have an American one you can go lower um, it's all up to you and, and what you want to taste um, but um, if you want more sustain, raise it up. If you and more lows, raise it up. If you want less lows and some more kind of crunchiness, um, lower it. And uh, after that, it goes into a uh, resistor. And uh, uh, what this input resistor does is um, it increases uh, the cutoff frequency um, and kind of boost gain uh, and if you want some more uh, sort of uh, crunchiness uh, slash drive, um, you can go ahead and uh, decrease this uh, slightly. Um, and if you want a more open uh, sound, um, uh, some more sustain, I mean, you can increase it. And uh, it's something that I, I'm also going to leave this one alone, uh, um, probably. And just go ahead and... Uh, make my next mod into the clipping stage. The clipping stage uh, is the same thing as this, as you can see, but you see there's an extra capacitor and some diodes. And if uh, I'll go ahead and add those, um, we'll draw this out. Um, I'm leaving that alone.
So there's that. And then there's my sustain mod. There's my little resistor uh, goes to ground. And there's that capacitor. I'm leaving that alone. I'm leaving that resistor alone. Okay. And we'll go ahead and uh, it's the same as uh, the other amplifier circuit. Where you have your input going here into the base, your emitter goes to a resistor to ground. Uh, because what I said before about the ratio of the gain, uh, this goes up into a resistor which goes to 9 volts. Uh, you have your resistor here. Uh, that's pretty much good where it's at. Um, you have your capacitor here. Again, just remove this and don't jumper it if you want to wicker it. And then there's the capacitor and diodes. Uh, the way that this works is these diodes in the feedback loop will clip the sound, and if you don't know what clipping means, um, I'll go down here. If I were to have a basic sine wave, the clipping diodes uh, have a voltage uh, drop off and will block signal in one direction while allowing signal to pass through uh, in another direction. So it'll uh, clip that and make it that nice distortion sound and then you get something more like this um, instead of the regular smoothed out sine wave and that's what um, the distortion sounds like if I mean um, a square wave sounds a lot harsher than a, a sine wave a triangle wave uh, will sound somewhere between that and it's really uh, what gives distortions that are sound is the use of clipping. Uh, the Big Muff is very unique in that uh, it has two clipping stages back to back. Usually distortion circuits don't do that. So with this one, you're clipping an already distorted signal. And that's what really gives it that crazy uh, muff sound uh, that's very, very well known. It's just the fact that it's two clipping stages back to back. So you're clipping here and then you're clipping it again. And that gives it that harsh almost square-like um, sound to it, and that's uh, what makes it as distorted as what it is. But um, what I'm going to do here is one of my push-pull switches that I'm going to put on the pot, it's going to uh, change the circuit, so um, go ahead and there's that, and we'll have the switch here, and switch here. And it'll, uh, I'm trying to think of the best way to do that. Uh, this is what the switch will look like, okay? It will uh, jump between this and this. And here I'll put the cap and some diodes. And then I'll do uh, the same thing on this one. And I can change the value of this cap, which will uh, contain the frequency in which things are clipped. And then I could also change the diode. And on this one, actually, what I'm going to do is remove that clipping section entirely. So um, since this is a double uh, pull, double throw switch, I could simply do it like this, where it ends up going like that. And so I can switch between uh, having the diodes there and not having the diodes there at all. And what this will do is, in this particular circuit um, section, it'll remove the clipping entirely, and then um, I'll be able uh, to have just 
two of these stages back to back and only one clipping stage, which gives it a much different sound because like I said, the point of the Big Muff sound is um, to have these cl two clipping stages. So that's a nice little touch to do. Um, I think there's a color sound pedal that's basically a Big Muff without these clipping stages. And uh, it, it makes a, a really cool uh, variation on the distortion. Um, after that, we go and and like I said, there's another input cap that you can change depending on your kind of bass and drive resistor that you want to change based on your drive. And then uh, it does the same thing. And I'm going to put a switch here, but instead of um, doing this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change uh, a, to a different cap, which will change the uh, clipping frequency. Uh, and then also um, I'm going to put some different style of diodes, probably germanium diodes. Um, it clips a lot softer, it gives a nice smoother sound, and then um, I'll be able to just clip, uh, just have one clipping stage, or I have two clipping stages, um, and I'll be able to, on the final clipping stage, do either silicon, which is a harder clipping, or germanium, which is a softer clipping diode. And uh, it makes a big difference, and it's a nice little touch. Um, if you're a Mission to Burma fan, uh, Roger Miller's uh, Big Muff, the Vacu Fuzz, I'm almost positive that it uses germanium diodes, so I'm a big Mission to Burma fan, and uh, I, I think it sounds pretty cool to have those germanium diodes there. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and do that. So leave some room here and I'll go ahead and uh, put my resistor there to ground and then we'll go ahead and go up here and then um, there's that switch goes up and uh, so here we have uh, germanium and might do maybe uh, two germanium diodes back to back just to have something different maybe even three who knows uh, we'll just do two germanium diodes back to back for now and uh, I think it's a pretty good basis uh, for that um, might change the cap uh, to change the cutoff, uh, the clipping frequency, and then on this one, you have that clipping, clipping cap. my switch there we go then there's that cap of course to remove it for wicker mod don't jumper there's that resistor uh, that goes to the resistor that goes to 9 volts and go ahead and draw the transistor here So uh, that's it for the clipping sections. Uh, it's pretty easy. Uh, it's the same thing as the first gain stage except for the addition of that cap and uh, the clipping diodes. And it's uh, one of the best things to play around with, really. Um, put LEDs in there, it'll give you a different sound. Uh, do some, Maybe try some asymmetrical with uh, LED and germanium diodes or maybe even MOSFETs or, uh, you know, just any sort of diode connection will work there and will give you different sounds and changing this capacitor will give you different sounds um, so it's a good place to play around with um, and one of the best things to give a very different tone um, or not a different tone but a different feel to the circuit and after uh, this we're going to go into the tone stack and we'll get into the tone stack and probably finish the circuit up um, in the next video. So I hope you're following along and that you've uh, come up with some good ideas.